And we're live. Yay. Hey. Hey. Yo. Hey. Yo. How's it going? Hey, How's it going? Going. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. going. Yep. Yeah. What have you guys been up to this week? Nothing special, really. Trying to catch up on TV shows because everything is coming out right now. So, what's, what's the best thing you're watching right now? Uh, the thing I like the most is The Bear Season 3, uh, followed probably by The Boys. Boys is good. Yep. Absolutely. And we were just talking about Acolyte's most recent episode. It was awesome. I really liked that episode as well. Yeah. Yep. That was cool. What about you, John? Anything cool going on in your life? No, not really. I'm in I'm in a lull right now. Just a bit of downtime, so I'm using that to yep. try to get some shit in order and like organize everything here in the office and and et cetera. Yeah. Does that mean you have like a trip coming up? No. Um oh, okay. Pax West <laughs> fell through, so we don't have our show, so oh. we're probably not gonna do Pax oh. West. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I got, we got, I got, we got rejected. So I'm like, it. all right, well, I guess I don't need to go to Pax Straight West up rejected. Day. Damn. Yeah. That's weird. Okay. Is that the they, first the Pax West the reason? you haven't done? Second. Oh, okay. I mean, and that's obviously then you got to keep in mind, like the COVID years, we weren't doing much. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Because right. like they were doing shows that. But yeah, they, they straight up said like, yeah, no, we're, we're trying to get newer shows back in. And as much as we know you guys are a good oh. poll, like, well, we're going to keep you off this year or something like that. All right. Oh, Try wow, again next that's year. a bummer. Sorry to hear it that. It is a bummer. I mean, like, cool, I get to save money, but, like, it's still a bummer, you know, enjoy. Yeah, no, exactly. That's a, yeah. That is yeah. otherwise the last con for the year. So I guess I'm, unless a surprise con pops up or Holiday Met Surrey wants me back, I'm done for the year. You're done. Just huh. wash your hands. Yeah. Go to sleep. See you in January. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah. It's weird. It is, it is weird. But I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. I think there'd be a bunch of like openings now that there's no more like Dr. Disrespect panels happening or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, was he even doing any? I don't I'm assuming I assume all the influencers get a panel or something. I don't know. I'm not sure that's how that works. I wasn't really following a lot of what Dr. Disrespect was doing until like three days ago. Until you yeah, can get everyone, away from it. Yeah. 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 Everyone was is talking about it now. I'm just like, oh, man. Brutal. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. It's but also like fuck that guy. So like whatever. No, it's like, not him. It's I'm a little worried about the game and the people he employed. Like if that's what hit oh, they're sure. gonna take or whatever. Because unfortunately, innocent people are gonna be affected by this fucking pedophile. So yeah, that yep, that's exactly what happened as well. So yeah, yeah, um, I hate it. All right, but let's talk about more fun stuff like video games. Um, yeah, because this is the top-down perspective, uh, and the D does not stand in TDP for Doctor Disrespect. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't even know if he's a real doctor. I, he I probably isn't. He's a answer. liar, is what he is. <laughs> um, it's June twenty seventh. I'm Sean Booker. Paul Fleck. I'm John Wheeler. John, did, are you playing anything? Nope. Pacross as usual. That's about it. Oh, Pacross. that sounds All nice. Right. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my life in order. That's all. Fair. All right, Paul, you've been tweeting a whole bunch about video games. I guess Have on your I? journey. Oh, yeah, you've yeah. Been... Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about the Resident Evil stuff recently because they released that the old game on a GOG. I've been tweeting about that a bunch. But um, yeah, what's up with that it, suddenly? Why? Yeah, right. Nobody knows. They just shadow dropped it out of nowhere. It's like this is available now, and everybody's like, awesome. This is a bad version, but you can patch it with this, so have fun. <laughs> like, have you right. been playing it? No, th so that was like news almost that happened like a day ago. The thing I've been playing is Nine Souls because I'm at the final boss, and that boss is probably going to take me a few hours of smacking my head against it to get it, but uh, that boss is so fucking cool. God, it's so good. Um, I kind of... I think this is one of my top games of the year easily right now it could be dethroned but uh just the satisfaction of just like learning all the parry timings for stuff and going into one of those fights and just consistently like parrying attacks and like moving around and stuff it's so cool once you get it but that game is difficult <laughs> like my final verdict is that game is fucking difficult uh but it's been really really fun so 
uh, I just need to finish it now. I did do all of the like collecting stuff or whatnot, so this is the the final thing. Just got to finish the boss now. Are you like looking forward to the end of it, or do you want to do you wish there was more? I don't know. I'm looking forward to the end of it because Bo, the Path of the Teal Lotus or whatever, comes out in like a month, less than a month, and that's going to be like another Asian inspired, like hand drawn Metroidvania thing that. I think is going to be more just normal hack and slash and not focusing on crazy parry timings and dodging. Bow bow in the Path of the Lotus or whatever? Path of the Lotus, yeah. So that I'm excited for. Uh, I I don't know. I'm excited for it to be done just so I can move on to the next thing. But, like, I've enjoyed, I would say, 90% of my time with this game, which is pretty good for how difficult it's been. I like it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you haven't started uh, Erd Tree? Well, funny story. Oh, this is this is a story. So <laughs> yeah, this is what I, this is the Twitter stuff I was talking about. Yeah. Um. I'm, I mean, I'll keep it short. I bought Erd Tree. Uh, I couldn't get it running for more than five minutes at a time. Like the base game, even though I loaded up the base game before Erd Tree came out to make sure everything was fine. And yep, I was playing around a little bit and kind of like relearning how to do stuff in that world. Totally yep. fine for a few hours one night. Er, uh, install Erd Tree. Go to it. It is crashing every five minutes almost like you could almost time it you could set your watch to it it was the exact same interval so i was thinking like i don't know what this could be i tried you like this this is too hard i'm gonna steam review it this is too hard yeah that yeah exactly we'll get to that um, Maybe that's what everyone's complaining about it's so hard it keeps crashing so i i did a whole bunch of different stuff including uninstalling Obviously, the game, uninstalling different parts of it, turning off shadow play, uninstalling the NVIDIA GeForce experience because I don't use that shit anyway. Like, basically everything I could think of. And then when How are you I. You get the most optimized drivers. I mean, I just download them myself. It's not that hard. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then I finally get it working for a little bit. And it crashes my computer so hard that it corrupts a Windows file of some sort, and I can no longer start my computer back up any time I try after that. So at 2 this in the, the morning... This, yeah, It's shit like this that scares me off of, like, PC gaming. It's shit like this that makes me sick of PC gaming. Because <laughs> it's just, like... <laughs> this game just, like, fucked me so bad. Because yeah, it's my... You paid, you paid 50 American dollars for, like, a massive headache. Yeah. So... <laughs> I, that's the real Elden Ring at like one or two in the morning or whatever it was now I'm like trying to find out how to like do recovery discs and all like redownload windows and all that sort of stuff I finally get it working at about three o'clock in the morning and I'm like okay at least we're set up so that like we can do TDP I can like work from home if I need to because sometimes I like do some things from home or whatever I like the priority list yeah. second <laughs> well work from home is like literally the bottom of the priority list because fuck those guys uh so <laughs> yeah i no, i just wanted to be set up and then the next day i reinstall like Erd tree and all that stuff and yeah it's working fine now uh and i am excited to play it but then it also kind of took the wind out of my sails when i wanted to play it and then i was like you know what Let's just finish I'm off so this tired. game. That, yeah, let's finish off this just game so that I'm tired. actually like in love with right now. Like, let's have, let's just keep having fun with that. So that's why I haven't started it. But I did load up Elden Ring. I went to the Egg of Mikola or whatever, and just like I'm standing right in front of droopy ass, gross arm that's coming out of the egg where you fight Moog. Yep. And that's wh when I started up. I'm ready to go. We're there. <laughs> So you don't actually know if it's going to crash after, like, five minutes again? No, I, I did play around for about half an hour to an hour, like, oh, okay. because I had okay. to... Oh, this is another thing. Before all of this even happened, there was a problem with my oh. save file where the only graces I had were in Limgrave, so I had to run around and just collect a whole bunch of other ones. What I basically had to run to the end of the game. <laughs> what? Yeah. But your character was, like... Yeah, Final level, level 400, kind of whatever, like, all my shit, Ow, it's all there. Shit. All my, my character is fully there. Everything was what fine. New what new game did you make it to? No, this one I kept just, like, I don't know. You like, kept playing on the base game. Yeah, I just kept base playing. Base game, you got it to level 400? 
Maybe 200. 400 there's seems ex- high. 400 seems 200. very high, it's but there's, there's enough exploits in that game. Because, yeah, I, mine was like 160. Yeah, yeah, it's probably 200. That sounds more okay. right. Okay, that that's sounds more right. Yeah. 400, I was like, holy Honestly, shit. Honestly, Paul, you, you played enough Elden Ring, I could believe it was 400. It's, I could believe it. I assumed you no, did some new game plus stuff. I did with another character, but like I didn't get far into it. Okay. Because I wanted to. I don't know. I just I didn't want to burn out. <laughs> I didn't want to burn out that game. Oh, and, hey, Urtry, Urtry's long. Yeah. So I'm excited to get back into it. And uh, I kind of have an idea of what type of build I want to do. I want to go back to like a strength build because for a long time I was uh, playing around with like the bleed and dex weapons and like dodging and stuff. But I kind of want to go heavy. I, I'm a big fan of just like giant weapons that take forever to swing that do like a massive amount of damage. And apparently from what I've overheard, this uh, DLC makes that like more viable than it was in the base game. So I'm stoked to kind of get back to that, I guess. I, I don't know why it does. I'm guessing it has something to do with maybe the stuff you pick up in it, but um, or maybe the, even the weapons you find there. But I'm uh, excited to do that. Yeah, I don't know. I would say like, I would say you would definitely have an easier time if you went with like a lot of magic, because there's like a lot of enemies mm. where it's just like you don't want to go anywhere near this guy. Like he's just a he's a piece of shit. <laughs> like do I not mean, get close to, to this be thing. fair. That's like all of these games, right? <laughs> They're all kind of like you don't want to but get. There's near this like guy there's some he's... bosses like I, so I'm at I'm at the final dungeon. Okay. Probably halfway through the final dungeon, um, I've like loaded up a a guide that was like here's all the bosses. So I have encountered every single boss and yeah. I have beaten the ones that I am that I think I will beat. And there are a handful that I'm just like, well, we're that's the end. I'm never going to come back to you. Um, and sure. some of those they're just like. They're like, uh, for people listening, there's a bunch of these like fire golems that are just kind of like walking around the map. I've heard they're just like people. They have so much health and they just do like so much wide damage. And my character has to get in close to hit them with the moon veil katana. It's the only thing I know. Um, (laughs) So it's like if I had magic, I could just stand back on my horse and just pick at him for a while. But then. I was doing that with arrows and I was like, okay, I'll give this a try. Those dudes will get down on their knees and blast a, a tornado of fire at you. <laughs> That's I funny. haven't killed a single one. There's like at least eight different ones. I haven't killed a single one of those guys. Do. Okay. You probably don't know the answer to this. Do they respawn if you kill them or are they kind of like, I've up... never killed one. I have yeah, no yeah. idea. I'm gotcha. hoping they don't. Yeah. Because are these the dragons. They're... No, they're like, Okay, picture like a man. Mm-hmm. Picture like a wicker man. There are wicker men that are on fire. But instead basically. of like a head, oh, and a the torso? giant wicker man yeah. made of people. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I've yeah. seen it. it. It was like a giant cage of fire for a torso and a head. Yeah, there's something like that in like the volcano area of the main story. Similar to it. Yeah, I think there they, is something. They pick similar. you up. They just drop you in their cage fire, and you're just you'd lose. Yeah, that makes sense. Just, that's what I that's would just do. Where you live forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, I haven't killed it. So yeah, so the one the, the the bosses I'm not going to be beating are all of those guys. <laughs> there's this. There's a bunch of dragons. Uh huh. Um, that are just kind of spread around the map. There's one I just cannot seem to beat. <clears throat> um. And then there is the dragon. Sure. And I cannot beat that one either. And I think that's that's it. I've, I think I've beaten everyone else. It seems like the general consensus of this thing is that it's really, really co- The world they built here is cool. The story stuff is very good. And, like, it's a really good extension of the main game. It kind of brings you back to, like, there's a reason to, like, explore and stuff like that, even if you are overtuned. Um but the bosses are motherfuckers and some of them so a lot of people i've seen even people that are like quite good at these games are just like some of these bosses are like ridiculous in a bad way <laughs> so it, it comes down to those those like fragment pieces you need yeah. to be getting those cuz the the this has been like kind of one of the big like dis- discourses over the week is people saying the game's too hard and they even did patch it like yesterday to make the first chunk of it easier um well, they made it so that apparently these pieces have more of an effect, which is the right way to do it, I think. Because they want you to go around and explore and find that stuff rather than go in 
naked with like a dagger and do like the stupid challenge runs or whatever people will do that obviously but they it seems like they really really want not the bosses to be easier but to give you like the tools that if you explore that you will have an easier time with them absolutely yeah you need to get those fragments that i was that i was talking about last time as well like that those uh, like in, in boost you significantly so you gotta find those yeah. and they can be like anywhere like pro tip there's these dudes walking around with like a sparkly jar <laughs> sometimes they're in there and you would not think that they're like worth anything because they're just like some of like the lowest level enemies yeah. sometimes they have them so so kill those guys and get and steal okay <clears throat> yeah pro tip yeah that one I was, when i learned that i was like shit because i had ignored so many of those oh so. yeah Cool. Anyway, yeah, so so I'm playing Shadow Retreat. I'm um, on the final dungeon. I'm, I'll probably finish that like tomorrow, I would assume. Cool. Or I'll get I'll get to the I, I can say I'll probably get to the final boss tomorrow. Mm. Who knows if I'll beat it or not? Um, I know I have one boss before the final one. Uh, so I have at least two bosses left in this area. And but yeah, I'm hoping to wrap that because I want to get to Alan Wake's DLC. That's the plan. Right. Yeah, you should probably play that. That's one night. Like, that's very short, so it's good, though. But uh, Erdtree's good. I have put about 25 hours into it, so I would assume okay. I have maybe two more to go. Okay. Are you, are you finding it, like, really difficult? No, that's the thing. It's like everyone's complaining about difficulty. I know I'm playing on easy mode with the Moonvale Katana and the Mimic tier. But I'm not finding it like soul crushing like these other people are saying. Like I got through all of it. So why aren't I, other people that are complaining using the tier or the katana? Like I don't understand. So be, here's the because thing: because they don't want to do that build because they're it's yeah. the people saying like they want to like play it a specific way. Yeah, I mean that's probably I, my so, guess is it, is it's probably people going into it thinking, oh, I've done like new game five. I I roll through these games and then. Not real, not realizing or t or or taking it seriously when they say it scales to your level. You need the fragments, and then just being like, "No, I'm mm. just going to play it like I've always played it. I'm not going to explore." And it's like, "Well, then you're. It is going to be very hard." This is kind of the problem I have with people that play these games in general. Is there is this weird like shaming gatekeeping mentality that people in that community have, and like the way I play these games is I because I find that fun. If I don't find this fun doing solo, I'm going to use Mimic tier. I'm going to use my plus 10 whatever. Like, I'm going to do that because I want to have fun because I'm not oh, a moron. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you I mean? mean? This, <laughs> this is like tangential to the conversation of like, should there be a, like difficulty options for like Souls games? And there, there are some is. people that are like... Mimic tier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a... that's and I think that's absolutely like kind of a way that From Software took that conversation as opposed yeah. to just like putting in a difficulty slider or whatever um because there's like a whole subset of people that are like no these games should be hard because that's the point it's like well then you're just like limiting who gets to play this and why why do you care if someone else is playing on easier mode i think i i kind of said as much on twitter too i think a big reason why we're seeing this happen first of all this ha this has happened with like almost every FromSoft game. The DLC is always a little overtuned and way more difficult than the base game. This isn't a new thing, especially after Dark Souls three kind of started the trend of like, oh, they hate me as the player. Like this is really difficult. Okay, and like it is what it is. But I think Elden Ring was so much bigger in like e how much it reached people and whatever that I think there's more. There is definitely more of a casual audience that jumped on here and they're getting kind of screwed over for the first time. And I think maybe those are the people that are complaining the most because they keep saying they added journalist mode. I haven't seen a single journalist complain. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like um, we all like finished the DLC before you guys complained about the difficulty so why are you calling it journalist mode i haven't even and i haven't seen like content creators and streamers and stuff that play these games i haven't seen them complain the only so i'm guessing the people that are complaining are people that are just not used to like how much of a difficulty spike some of these dlcs could be or whatever and that that's fair to some extent but also it's unfortunately just kind of the way it is it's always going 
every FromSoft game when they release a new thing, expect that it's going to be way overtuned. And if you want it to be a little bit easier, just wait a little bit, and they probably will tune it back a little bit. They do for which everything, is what, which is that's exactly what they did with this recent patch. But I would almost like expect it to be harder like you have to play a very significant chunk of elden ring before you can even access this this is not for like yeah you know so, some dlc expansions it's like oh you can just pick up from wherever you can just jump straight into it yada yeah. yada like I, I think i've even like uh cyberpunk th they did the option that i selected where it's like just give me a new character at the beginning of the dlc i just want to play that sure. no you have to play probably close to 50 hours of elden ring yeah do an optional difficult boss before you can even get into this like Maybe you were a casual person trying out Elden Ring, but if you're playing Erdtree, if you have access to it, I don't think you're casual anymore. You've put multiple days of your life into this game. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe just people forgot that, like, Elden Ring sure. before... It is two years. Elden Ring before you got the thing that you found that, like, broke the game for you, like, wasn't a cakewalk either. None of these games, until, like, you get used to them, are easy. And, like, maybe it's just easy to forget that, like, Elden Ring was difficult for everybody at some point for the first, like, few hours or 20 hours or 10 or whatever. Like, I don't know. It's... I I thought it was part of the fun. That's why it's we like play Batman it, right? Said, we fall so we get back up. True. Well, Batman didn't say that, but yeah. Yeah, or, that was Well, Alfred. someone said that to Batman. Yeah. And I'm sure he's probably said that to, like, a little guy. At some point, to a little guy, <laughs> Robin, maybe. I don't I, yeah, know. I guess so. one of the Robins, the little guy, if you will. Yeah, like the royal little guy. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm excited for her tree. I know I'm going to get the shit kicked out of me, and I'm I'm ready for it. But like, and you're gonna thank it. You're gonna get punched well, in the stomach, and you're be like, thank you, one more, please. Like going back to Nine Souls, I spent three hours on one boss, and like that's that's what we do. We play games that are difficult because that the win feels so good. It's what we do. It's fine. It'll be fine. Thirty four point right. five percent have beaten Mog according to Steam achievements to even get into that DLC. That's just for PC version. And I think that went up. I think it was lower before the DLC. <laughs> so yeah, it makes sense. That oh, I'm sure like tons of people were trying to get as as far as they could to get to the DLC. I mean, they and Eric, you also said earlier, 25 million soul. Yeah, I saw that news story. So like, yeah, there that's a lot of people want to play Erdtree for sure. And it's good. It's it is very enjoyable. That boss you have to beat to even get to the DLC is also a motherfucker in his own right. So like that is a de decently difficult fight. Yeah, yeah. And like, so, and like putting it in perspective of like how I'm, I'm having the difficulty. I went through most of Elden Ring with a co-op partner that I would summon in. That's like super easy mode because now mm. I had like mimic tier with an actual human brain. Oh, um, does that, can this, you do mimic tier and have a summon, like a person with you? You you can't, it, it take, you can't do any Ash summon. Yeah. Okay. They that's, basically are your Ash. That's summon. what I figured. Okay. okay. But uh, obviously that's going to be an even more powerful summon is bringing in a homie um yeah and i did a lot of probably like 70 percent of elden ring i did that because i just wanted to play a co-op sure. i wasn't able to do that for erd tree um based on because of me getting it early for the most part and i i have hit no walls except for and when i do because it's elden ring i go somewhere else and i get stronger yeah also i know you keep denying it but the, playing these games is making you better just straight up <laughs> I know you keep saying like, oh, I don't think I don't, so or whatever. Know, when you pa play games that parry, you get better at parrying. It's just the way it is. I don't right? parry. I don't parry in this. I'm not I'm talking really about good this. I'm talking about in general. Tier and running away while mimic tier. Hey gets man, the shit if it works, who gives a him? shit? Who cares? And then I come up behind the guy <laughs> and I go. <laughs> if it works, who they? If they didn't want you to use it, they wouldn't put it in the game. No, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> No, I have, I feel absolutely no shame, and I feel like a boss when I beat it, and I give Mimic Tier a high five because he did ninety percent of the work. Oh, okay. See, that's a problem. You should never talk to your Mimic Tier. That's He's bad. my best friend. We have been through. <laughs> you, you don't even know what we've been through together. You're about to find out. True. True. All right, let's do some news. Some small stuff happened this week. Uh, let's start with a couple stories from Xbox. Uh, they announced, I think, this morning. 
that they're cloud streaming, which they, you know, they've had a partnership with Samsung for a couple of years now. They now have a new partnership coming out with Amazon. <clears throat> so on certain Amazon Fire Stick TVs, those little HDMI things that you can plug in to get access to like streaming services, their Xbox Cloud is now going to be working on that. Um, which that's pretty cool. So if you're like you're traveling, you bring a controller, you bring that tiny little dongle, now you got Xbox Game Pass with you. Yep, that's cool. That's a pretty cool thing. Just another, you know, another reason not to have an Xbox and an easy way to take your Xbox with you. Um, so I'm glad to see it's like, you know, having it tied to Samsung TVs was nice, but there's, there's a very small percentage of people who have a this specific Samsung TV. So this is like, I think I was the story was like for 40 bucks. Sorry, 50 or 60, depending if you want the whatever the difference between the stick 4K and the stick 4K Max is. But mm. hey, 50 bucks, you get a new controller and uh, and the stick. I think that's a pretty good deal. Those controllers are like 50 bucks on their own. So you need a yeah. new controller, get this, I guess. I am uh, interested in what type of connection you need for it to like really... Like I'm wondering if there is, because it's on the stick, even a little bit more of a delay than if it was on something else, but I'm not sure how that would work. I'm I'd assuming be... it would be the same as any other time you use cloud. You know, just um, like if you're if you're on the same Wi-Fi. Uh, I would assume it would yeah. be the same as that. Yeah. Yeah, going to like a hotel or something, it might not work great. But, you know, True. well, if you had your own like network or whatever that you, you could like do your own Wi-Fi from your phone or whatever, if it was stable enough, it might yep. be okay still too, actually. Sure. Yep. Yep. I've had I've had great experiences with uh, cloud gaming. Like, I, I super recommend that. I've done that traveling. Yeah, like, especially the t- if... I played some Lies of P over cloud gaming. It, that's how smooth it was running. So I Pretty think that impressive. kind of tells you. Did you finish yeah. that game? I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. I said over, like, Thanksgiving. Uh, okay, and the second one, um, just kind of a fun little peek behind the curtains. Uh, if you... Project Keystone, uh, you might not remember what that is. This was Xbox's streaming box that they were trying to get out there. Yeah, right. That they eventually canceled... Um, and put kind of all that research and development into the Samsung TV uh, partnership for their cloud gaming, as opposed to having the dedicated box. Mm. And we once saw a a hint of it in Phil Spencer's background on some photo or something. Anyways, the patents have come out, just kind of giving us a bit more of details of, of what the thing like physically looks like. So there's not like anything new here, really. But it was basically a white uh, box with a circle on the top and the bottom. You could pair a controller to it. You could plug an Ethernet cable into it, an HDMI port, and power. And that was pretty much it. And if you remember, they couldn't get the price down low enough for it to be like a viable product. So that's why it was kind of canned. uh, Because it would have to come bundled with a controller and they wanted to get it like under 100 bucks. Um, And at the time, that just wasn't possible. But... So yeah, these these surfaced, and so there's probably the only look we'll ever get on one of these unless they try remake it. I don't know. With the route they're going, I'm assuming they'll just keep partnering with other, like Roku's probably next, right? And they'll just keep going like that. That's kind of cool, though, yeah. seeing that. Yeah. There's going to be another Street Fighter movie in uh, 2026. Yeah, okay. They never sure. learn. Apparently. They never learn. Yeah. <laughs> True. Um... I saw the I saw the recent one, the Chun Li one. Chun Li one is that's, terrible, is what I've heard. It's terrible. It's one of the worst movies I've it's ever seen. So I like boring. the nineties movie. I will stand I up for the nineties movie. I love it. Movie. I love it too. It's so good. In like the worst possible way. Raul Julia though, like that man can turn anything into gold. So Yeah. What would you want from a from a new You think they would just kind of go with like the Mortal Kombat route? Which which Mortal Kombat route? Well, the the, huh. the recent movie, and then they're already working on the sequel, right? Is that? I honestly, I think that Mortal Kombat movie is forgettable. I like that. Movie. I I, I have really still like not seen it as a Mortal Kombat fan. So wow, like it it's fine. I just think it's a completely forgettable movie. I think both of them are fun for different reasons. One's a like okay. good '90s schlock. The other is garbage. 
in the best way. <laughs> I like how we're completely so, skipping the second Mortal Kombat movie. We're talking about the first and the third, but not the second. Oh, I was talking about the first and the second. Oh, of so the you're not talking set? about the recent one, Paul? No, that is actual trash. <laughs> I don't think it's that bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> um, well, that one's getting a sequel, so... Okay. Hey. I'll watch it. Um, I watch it all of them, so why not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I'll probably see that. Did you know that the uh, the recent, the Chun Li one, which came out in two thousand nine, that's the same year the Dragon Ball movie came out. Also, oh, one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I've heard two thousand nine. Not a great about year that. for movies. Yeah, <laughs> you haven't seen that? I haven't. I said, tell you what, what you got to do is you got to play the PSP game based no, on the movie. Come on, wait. <laughs> Based on the movie, yeah. okay. Yeah, based Dragon on the Ball movie. Evolution. Wow, I didn't yes, realize. I, I didn't realize they made a game based on it. That's funny. Yeah, I actually don't know much about that other than like the short, <laughs> quick look a giant bomb did. Oh, okay. Uh, back in the day, mm -hmm. um, that movie is extreme trash. Like, holy smokes! I've heard this. The movie's bad from everybody that's seen it. I did. I double featured actually. Now, now I'm remembering when that movie came out. I double featured Dragon Ball Evolution with Fast and Furious. Yeah, which it would have been the fourth Fast and Furious. They came out on the same. I think they came out on the same weekend and watched the back to back with a friend. Is that the Brazil one, the bank heist? No, because that's five. That's, that's the five. best one. Okay. Four is the one is like the Mexican drug tunnels one. Oh God! <laughs> yeah. It's not. It's one of the weak ones for sure yeah god i forgot all about that okay and i know that because like when five was coming out and my friends and i were like let's watch all four of them and then go to the midnight showing of five yeah and it's like okay so you watch the first one you're having a good time you're watching two not having a great time anymore then three comes and it's like hell yeah now i'm having the best time yeah and then four is another letdown and then five is like a the, it's like a dessert oh it's so good it's incredible I really don't remember four at all, so that probably says speaks a lot to its quality. <laughs> On I don't remember anything other than like the races in the tunnels. That's yeah. all I can remember. And the bad guy gets like like hit by a car while he's like up against a car. He's mm. like pinned there as the <laughs> cops come or something like that. Sure. I don't even remember who the bad guy is. Yeah. It's not a, you don't need to see four. Just watch five again. Right. Yeah. Dead Rising is getting a remake. Hell yeah, I've been jonesing yeah. for Dead Rising. Yes. Yeah. yeah this Original is Dead Rising? Uh, I mean, so I know it's a remake of Dead Rising 1. Uh, yep. And they added better options in Dead Rising 2 onwards. But like, I just I just kind of excited for that. Like, I love that gameplay. The idea of just like, you got 72 hours. You're in a mall. Just do whatever. It's a playground game, basically. But there's all so these missions you can just kind of find. And it's also like time management and everything. The, the timer is like the unique thing, and they got rid of that in. I know four didn't have it. Maybe three didn't have it either. Three was just extremely lenient on the timer, but it was there. Okay, because you had no a one week, and two You had a week in game uh, in Dead Rising Three. But I also played that okay. co-op, so like co-op makes it such a joke because like some people can just go to where the next mission is while you're doing another mission. And it's just a you breeze. Sure. You think they take the timer out to make it more in line with the latest Dead Risings? I don't think so. I think that's the charm of Dead yeah. Rising One is the timer. Yeah, Plus, I'm so. pretty I'm pretty sure in the trailer that they link, it straight up mentions the 72 hour time limit. Oh, does it? Okay. I, I was think. I had just seen the screenshots. The oh, um I so I don't like the way Frank looks in this. I don't know what they're yeah. doing with his look this, this time. And it's definitely not the I don't even think it's the last two voice actors they had for Frank West. It's not, yeah, it's a new voice actor, I believe. I was seeing people commenting on that weird huh and it is the dead rising deluxe remaster so it's drdr <laughs> yeah with the acronym this guy's covered wars did you know that yeah that's that's Heard. his catchphrase apparently yep uh it, i mean okay it does someone does say three days i could it doesn't explicitly mention the timers there i could see them go either way with that but i guess we'll find out it would be weird if they took it out like that's one of the the you know the charms. Yeah. yeah. What are you, Paul? Are you gonna play this? Uh no, probably not. No. Okay. Mainly just because I don't really have any want to go back to Dead Rising right now. If I did, I would totally pick it up, but 
As of Dead Rising Two, that's my Dead Rising. Yeah, that's fair. I don't want to go back to any Case of them currently. Zero? Case Zero rocked. That was so cool. Yeah. Very short, but fun. Very short, yep. All right, the last story here is Ubisoft is planning on remastering uh, some of the old Assassin's Creed games. Yeah, all right. I guess there's not enough Assassin's Creed games coming out, which I already thought there was a lot coming out, but they found a way to make more of them come out. No, there's not um, enough money that they have. That's the problem. <laughs> more money they need more money yep i mean hey assassin's creed 2 and brotherhood some of the best ones i just don't know if i need to go back and play them though yeah no totally that's super fair but but hey for you know new generation of gamers who never played those ones yep those are some fun games at the time brotherhood has some cool multiplayer if they bring the multiplayer back that'd be that would be a little more interesting to me that was like a weird game of like hide and seek tag yeah um, that was cool i agree that was cool. It was weird. It worked surprisingly well. All right. That's the news. Let's do some questions. Pop down perspective at gmail.com is the email address at TDP podcast on Twitter, the discord channel or John's PO box. And you can sound like Suku Suku who writes, um, if your area were to have a massive earthquake, what would be the thing in your room to kill you? A All shelf. the bookshelves. Yep. Bookshelves. I remember when I was living in an apartment building, uh, I had three bookshelves, I think, behind me. And my right behind you. Saying, that's, yeah, yep. that's how you're going to die, John. They, like, it was like, I was uncomfortably close to them. Yep. It was very I close. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, oh, you can definitely still see, like, that webcam shot for some, from some old TDP yep. episodes. For yeah, sure. real Absolutely. old. That's, like, 2013, 2014. Yeah. We've been doing this for a while. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I do have a bookshelf in here. If I'm standing, I am taller than it, so I don't think it would kill me. Mm. I don't know if anything in this room necessarily would kill me. Based on like where I am, maybe just the earthquake itself would kill me mm. um, <laughs> due to the area. But uh, I don't know if the I guess if the bookshelf like landed on my head, yeah, I would die. But. I do have the PS3, the original PS3, the fat in my closet there on like a top thing, kind of in oh, the geez. back. So if the earthquake was violent enough and it like launched it, that would definitely kill somebody. <laughs> but that's pretty that's, far. That's actually a good point. In the closet here, I have like like all kind of my old consoles. So yeah. like the P the PS5 is up there. I guess that's not an old console, but the the launch PS5 is up there. Um. PS4 Pro's up there. Like, yeah, those could do some damage for sure, yeah. Yeah. VGC Kenny writes, a video game director asks you for a real year and real location to be the setting of their next video game. They'll do the rest. What year and what location are you choosing? The Order 1776 or whatever the fuck it was called. I was going to uh, also say something stupid just like, well, you know, they could do like uh the normandy or what you could do normandy from world war ii because that hasn't been done enough or like just <laughs> world war ii in general yeah. seems like uh like no good one's done that yeah, yeah. a good one uh -huh. there's like so many cool stories you could tell <laughs> yeah they should do that my mind Im immediately went to like feudal japan and i'm like there's a ton of that right now <laughs> yeah like yeah like, i have we are feasting with that so i'm good um And then, like, Yakuza has plenty of, like, 80s Japan. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I need I need a bit more modern day stuff because I feel like mm. certain mm -hmm. game, like, certain genres tend to skip out. Like, JRPGs don't always do modern day. Like, I feel like they've been getting more true. popular now because of Persona and stuff like that. That's true, yeah. Shooters are modern day, sure, let's say that, because of Call of Duty and that, but... Mm -hmm. I also like near futurism stuff. So like, oh, like let's just say fifty years in the future. Just come up okay. with something that can could be theoretically possible fifty years in the future. Or just go nuts. Say like in the fifty years in the future we got cyberpunk. I think I think uh Call of Duty did near future as well though, didn't they? Isn't that like what like advanced warfighter was? Yeah. 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 It's hard because like when I think like far back, it's like what's the weapons? I mean it doesn't have to be a shooter, right? Yeah, no, you're right. Um, I I go to the shooter immediately though for some reason. But like, what's the um, 
What was that Anno game that just got announced? Anno 117. Like that's a, a pa Pax Romana. That's a fun setting. Like that's a it's a unique one. Yeah. I'd probably do more stuff in uh like Aztec Mexico or something. There's not en enough done in Mexico, I feel. Have you played Guacamole? Like literally the only one. If we're not talking about like Guacamole real, 2. If we're not talking about like real indie stuff, because there is like, I think they even showed at this uh, Summer Games Fest, there's like one that's taking place during like a Spanish, rev the Mexican Revolution or something. Like there's some cool shit there, but I don't think there's enough Isn't like. Forza big Horizon stuff. 5 in Mexico? Yes, it is. It's in parts it of it. Seems like they got three games, man. Three major games, yep. Yep. Put one in Canada. Canada's boring. But it's always a good snow level, so there's... <laughs> always, it's always a good snow level. Yeah. Hundreds of beavers, but it's in, that's probably, probably shot in Canada. Dad writes in and says, how many in-game hours do you wait to purchase a microtransaction cosmetic item in a video game? Mm. Depends. If I, re if I really like something, I'll buy it right away. I don't give a shit. I yeah. Have right away? It depends. Like, for like, Fortnite took me a while before I bought anything. But at that point, I'd already clocked, like, probably 100 hours on it. So I'm like, yeah, at this point, I think I can do that. I've reinstalled Fortnite not having it on my computer just to buy the Resident Evil pack and then uninstall it. Just so yeah. in case I wanted to play it late. Like, yeah, that's, I don't care. That's weird. That's a weird <laughs> move. Yeah. And I've used it um, every time I've played since. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't think I would do it right away because right away would imply i'm i'm playing the game for the first time and i don't know if i'm going to stick with this game that's fair so i don't care what this character looks like yeah um, sure well i think i need to put like a handful of hours if i've if i've put money if i've like bought the battle pass then i'm definitely more likely to like actually put other money into it because i'm committing to like okay i'm gonna play this for a few weeks at least you so. buy but you know how you can like buy progression in the battle pass do you ever do that no, I don't I really. don't either. I never understood, like, why you would do that, because for me, the battle pass is, like, kind of the carrot on the stick to keep me playing it. Yeah, well, I mean, it just comes down to, like, do you have more time or money? And knowing, like, hey, I can I only get so. this skin. So it's like, well, I've got more money than time at the moment, and I would like the fancy skin. I'll... How's that any different than me just buying that skin? But this time I'm, I'm instead buying, you know, 16 levels that I need left. So it's. I think it's fi fine that you have the option to do either. Yeah. As opposed to just locking it behind one. Sure. But yeah, I need to put a handful of hours into it because I need to. It needs to be something that I know I'm gonna like keep installed on my console or whatever. Yeah, that's fair. And final question from Phantom Aegis: When do you see game prices increasing again? Just give a year of when you expect and the new base standard. Next, so we're at next generation. Mm. Next generation. So, so we're like what halfway through. So I think we're more than like, half through this one, aren't we? Or are we assuming? Well, Sony. I'm going off of PlayStation saying the PS5 has entered its second half of its life. So I think it, the rough estimate is like 2028. Hmm. Because that would be four years on either side, right? Um. So for so we're saying standard pricing is 70. You think 2028 it goes to 80? Yeah. Yeah, I mean some companies are already kind of pushing for the like 90 100 for like a quote unquote deluxe edition but the deluxe edition gets you jack shit except for like 3 days early access and a skin. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, I mean it works. People It does work. People I buy it, it. So that's why everyone does it now like Yeah, I hate it so much. It does work. I don't know. I, I could see. I could see 70, next year. It was on the generation, right? It was yeah. on the generation swap. Yes. I think, yeah. So I. Yeah, I'm wondering if they do it again so quickly, but I do think it will go up again for sure. Yeah, I think so too. Hmm. I mean, you're gonna have to vote with your dollar, whether you want to or not. You're you have less money. Right. So. Yeah. Yep. 
but we'll get the like they'll do kind of the the half step thing where it's like hey you can buy the 70 dollars, but it's the ps5 not the ps6 version so if you want the ps6 version it's going to be the full 80 because they still do that with games i feel like if they're yeah on the few games that are still cross-platform which there's very few of them these days even call of duty is not going on the last console i believe so yeah all right. If you thanks everyone for sending a question in. If you want to send a question in for the next time, it's top member perspective at gmail.com at TDP podcast on Twitter, the Discord channel, or John's P.O. Box. What is your game of the week? Nine Souls. Uh, what was that game I played on stream last night that I really enjoyed? Uh, Master Key. Okay. Okay. I have no idea what that is. Cool. It's a cute little two uh, black and white Metro or uh, Zelda like. It's kind of like Minute without the timer. Yeah, it looks it looks aesthetically like Minute, but it's a it's very much Zelda, and you play as a fox, and uh, no one has actual spoken dialogue. All the dialogue is just so like a tunic. <laughs> Not quite either. No, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's fun. I was playing it on stream the other day. Oh, and mine's Erd Tree again. Hopefully for the last time. <laughs> um, all right, thanks everyone for listening, and we'll uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye everybody.